Have you ever seen something like this? f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. And thought, what does that even mean? Is it multiplication? Is it just another way to write y? In this video, I'll break down function notation, explain how it works using real-world examples, and show you how to evaluate functions step by step. Let's get started. Function notation is just a cleaner, more flexible way to write equations. Instead of writing y equals something, we write it as f of x. The f is just the name of the function. The letter inside the parentheses x is the input. So when you see f of x, think, what is the output when I plug in x? Let's say we have a function, f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. That just means, to find the output, take the input, square it, multiply by 3, subtract 4 times the input, then add 5. Let's try our first example. Evaluate f of 2. We plug in 2 everywhere we see x. So f of 2 equals 3 times 2 squared, minus 4 times 2, plus 5. First, 2 squared is 4, then 3 times 4 minus 8 plus 5. Now we have 12 minus 8 plus 5. Minus 8 is 4, and 4 plus 5 equals 9. So the input is 2, and the output is 9. That means f of 2 equals 9. Let's try a second example with a linear function. Let's say g of x equals negative 6x minus 2. What is g of negative 4? We replace x with negative 4. g of negative 4 equals negative 6 times negative 4 minus 2. Negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24. 24 minus 2 equals 22. So g of negative 4 equals 22. Here's where it gets a little more interesting. What happens if the input is not a number, but an expression? Let's take f of x equals 2x squared minus x. Find f of x plus h. That means we replace every x in the function with the quantity x plus h. f of x plus h equals 2 times, open parentheses, x plus h, close parenthesis, squared, minus, open parenthesis, x plus h, close parenthesis. Start by expanding x plus h squared. That means x plus h multiplied by x plus h. Now apply the distributive property. x times x gives x squared. x times h gives xh h times x also gives xh, and h times h gives h squared. Now combine xh and xh, that gives 2xh. So x plus h squared becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now multiply the entire expression by 2. That gives 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared. Next, subtract the quantity x plus h. Distribute the negative sign, minus x minus h. Now write the final simplified expression. f of x plus h equals 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus x minus h. When we evaluate a function, we usually start with an input, a value for x. We plug it into the function rule to get the output, or f of x. But what if we're told the output first? For example, m of x equals 2, and we're asked, what value of x gives that result? This process is called working backward. It means solving for the input when you already know the output. m of x equals x squared minus 7, and we are told m of x equals 2. To find the input, we start by writing an equation. Set the function equal to 2, x squared minus 7 equals 2. Now solve for x. First, add 7 to both sides. x squared equals 9. 
Next, take the square root of both sides, x equals positive or negative 3. So there are two inputs that give the same output, 3 and negative 3. That means m of 3 equals 2, and m of negative 3 also equals 2. This is common with quadratic functions. Because the graph is a curve, the same output can come from two different x values. Let's look at a real-world example of evaluating a function. A taxi company charges $3 per mile plus a $5 flat fee. We can write this as a function, c of x equals 3x plus 5, where x is the number of miles and c of x is the total cost. Let's start with a 4-mile ride. We want to evaluate c of 4. That means we plug 4 in place of x. So c of 4 equals 3 times 4 plus 5. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 5 is 17. So a 4-mile ride costs $17. Now let's try a 10-mile ride. This time we evaluate C of 10. That's 3 times 10 plus 5. 3 times 10 is 30. 30 plus 5 is 35. So a 10-mile ride costs $35. Whenever you're working with real-world function problems, just remember, plug in the input, follow the order of operations, and find the output. If this video helped you understand how functions work, please consider subscribing to our channel. We post new math videos every week to help you learn faster and feel more confident.